Well, now, why is it that uh, this country, which is uh, our mythology, says we're a country of individuals, of competition, self-seeking, capitalist, et cetera, and there's more capacity for human cooperation here than uh, any place I can think of. Unbelievable. I don't know how you, how you get it, but you ought to see the redness of mutual help that you have in this country. And this connects with your idea about kindness, you know, that anybody who writes a book about America and doesn't mention kindness doesn't know what this country is. But it's more than that. It's not a role that you play. You don't preach about it. You don't sing about it. You don't grandstand about it. This is part of the mechanics of life. Let me tell you something. One uh, year, I was picking peas. I think they paid us 35 cents a hamper. And the hamper had to be full in order to get paid. The hamper wasn't full, just to bed. But my last hamper wasn't full. And so what do you do? Well, you go out to the field and see, find roads that haven't been picked clean. And then you go start picking. So I got me an empty hamper and I was picking and I was taking care of it. And then, what did I see? There was a fellow at the other end of the row, picking peas into his head. I was furious. Here's that son of a bitch. I said, he knows that I need a few peas to get me my 35 cents. And here is picking a few peas in order to cook it in his head. By the time we met, I was ready to jump at his throat. What did he do? He emptied his hat into my hamper. He said, now you owe a hat full of peas to somebody else. <laughs> we are passing on. You know, whatever good we do, we expect somebody else to pay the debt to somebody else, not to us. You, you start know, a chain. There's kindness is here, and there's also a violence here. Yes, is there a yes, contradiction yes. in this? Uh, Look, Mr. Severide. It wasn't the cream of creation that built this country. You know, there was a time in Italy you had a choice either to go to jail or to go to America. See? Yeah. We are not, we haven't been peopled by philosophers and, and milk and toast and so on. We have been peopled by violent people. See? And there should be violence here. And it's remarkable how little violence you have when you come to think of it. To me, the Orient isn't mysterious. What the hell is there mysterious about sloth and decay and, and hot air? To me, the real mystery is America. What makes us run? What makes us do things? How we do things? Nobody knows anything about us. Have you noticed what a tremendous trust we have here? And by the way, you know, this trust has gone against all Marxist doctrine. By the way, you know, nothing confirms the Marx, you know, even history is heretical. If Marx was in power now, he would put in a concentration camp, he put history in a concentration camp. <laughs> doesn't conform to the party line at all. But I remember in my early years on the waterfront, uh, when I picked it with, uh, with, with the communists used to be revolted by the fact that the newspapers were standing there and everybody was trusted to put a nickel and buy it. And they wanted to destroy this process. They were stealing papers. They were stealing papers, not because they, they wanted the paper, but to destroy that trust. It offended them, you know, that a capitalist, self-seeking society should have so much trust. Well, now, when you, uh, when you stopped working as a longshoreman a few months ago, yeah. I think they obliged you to retire, the union yeah, did, yeah, yeah. You've yeah. written a lot about the ordeal of change. You've written a lot about leisure. Yeah. How did it affect you? Was well, it, it didn't you? affect me much because you know, this is, this is a fantastic country, and it's a good country to me, I'll tell you why. I think a, country, a society is good where a person can feel, first of all, a human being before he's anything else. And this is what I felt all my life here. I always, when I sit down to write, when I get to my room, I'm a human being first. And only secondly, a working man, only secondly, an American, only, and so on. See? And so, I never felt like a working man, although I've been working all my life, you know. I just felt like Eric Hoover all my life. That's it. No difference. As far as the sense of usefulness is concerned, I put in 50 years of hard work. And even a horse that works that long there yeah. has earned his rest. So I don't feel any sense of guilt. And, uh, and I'm used to get along with all the things I like. I've trained myself to it all my life. There's well, nothing I have to have except three meals a day, a few books to write, to read, and maybe a few lines to script. But give me these three things, and I could go on forever. Well, what about the rest of your life? How are you going to spend it now? Well, you never worry. You know, the woman who brought me up told me that I had nothing to worry about. I was going to die at 40. So I went through life like a tourist. When I, came, when I was 40, I took my pulse. Everything was functioning fine. So I'm <laughs> living on velvet now. 
That will come tomorrow, that will come this evening. It matters not, see. I have no grievance against anybody. I always got more than I deserve. And I'm, I'm not just talking, Mr. Severat, see. I always felt that I got more than I deserve and that I have to treat people better than they deserve. No bookkeeping as far as people is concerned, see. And, uh, You've lived a long life, 65 years, according to the insurance companies. I ought to curl up and die now, see? And so, whenever it comes, let, let, let me tell you something happened this spring. Uh, I, have a, I have a room in the Chinese section there, and looking out of my windows, I see the Golden Gate Bridge. It's an old house, but I love that room. And the marine hill on the other side. And the grass was just coming out. And I, I remember how the sentences came to me. On the gray green hills, every end has a beginning. Kiss to life by dancing showers. My end has no beginning, no slumbering sea of velvet and flowers. And I was reconciled. I was reconciled. Thank you, Mr. Hoffman.